X rate is coming in hot. Look at this. Oh my god, I'm playing Raft in 2020. Need for speed drift. Stop it. Get some help. Hey guys, due to popular request, what I'm going to be doing in today's video is reading through the Shadowlands class changes for the alpha and basically just talking about my ideas for Warlocks in general, starting off with obviously Affliction, Demo and Destro um, and then I'm going to be talking about what spells and improvements that I think Blizzard could make to make you know warlocks feel great again i mean destro's always been that class that is absolutely brilliant right but i just want affliction and demo to be top tier again so what i'm gonna do guys is kind of do like a commentary video and showcase my opinions and thoughts on the class changes that have been released on um wowhead and everything like this so if i pull up a tab here so we're only going to be covering basically warlock today and maybe a few other classes so i'm going to jump straight um towards warlock which is towards the bottom like usual so if i start off by reading it and then i will showcase my opinions does that sound fair i think so so all warlock specs are now receiving the following abilities Baseline abilities, so Curse of Doom, Curse of Tongues, Curse of Recklessness, Curse of Weakness, and Demonic Circle. So, from an initial standpoint, I actually think this is really nice. It makes, you know, all three specs feel viable again because we have baseline curses. So, obviously, curses are very important and going to be very important in Shadowlands as well, in my opinion. Because having these extra abilities will allow you to ramp up your damage and allow you to survive in certain situations. So say if you're going against a, I don't know, uh, a cleave composition or something against two melee comps. Right? You can use Curse of Weakness to obviously reduce their damage. Um, you can use um, Curse of Doom just to get some more damage out as like demonology and... I don't know, it just feels a little bit better than not having those filler abilities. So having these curses baseline is just going to allow you to survive a little bit longer and in situations maybe pull off a little bit more damage. Having Demonic Circle baseline is very, very nice. Now, this is something I've wanted for a long while. Obviously, Mr. Pandaria, we had this and other expansions, we had this as well. I just feel like as a Warlock, you need your Demonic Circle um, most of the time, purely for the fact that it allows you to get away and kite the enemy a little bit more. Um, also, sorry about the background noise, if you can hear anything. Um, but yeah, I just feel like Demonic Circle baseline is going to allow Demo to be better. Affliction to be better and Destro is going to make it top tier again because it's just going to allow you to escape from the enemy's burst and just allow you to kite a little bit to get some healing in arena so it's actually very very nice and for PvE it could work very solid too. So there's a new a new talent called empower um, called Tongue Tide empowers a spouse cast on a target with Curse of Tongues, cause them to seal the victim from receiving healing effects, forcing them to succumb to all incoming damage for a moderate amount of time. So basically, um, what this allows Curse of Tongues to do is make the enemy not receive healing for a certain amount of time. So obviously. In um, PvP, this is going to be absolutely awesome. I think that the healing um, reduction is going to be sick. Uh, but could make uh, Affliction be a lot better and more viable. Because if they can't heal themselves, then you're going to be doing a lot more damage. However, I don't know if this is dispellable or not. So, if it is dispellable, it's going to be a little bit... I don't know. They have to rework it because... If it is dispellable, like I said, then they can just get rid of your dots and therefore it's going to be bad in my opinion because you're not going to be able to do any damage if they can just, you know, cleanse this off. So they need to, obviously I don't have alpha so I can't really see this, but as long as this can't be dispelled, I think it's going to be good because say even if it's like three seconds where they can't heal, it's going to be beneficial because you can use it when they're below like 20% health and then they can't um, receive any damage, no healing, sorry, and you can just get that final kill potential, which obviously Affliction lacks, so it could be very, very good. Now, moving on to Affliction, Unstable Affliction no longer stacks on the target, now lasts for longer and no longer consumes a soul shot. So this is very good. I've had a lot of comments saying, Xrathus, have you read the patch changes? What do you think on Unstable Affliction not stacking up to five times? Personally, I think this is going to be so much better. Um, 
Now you're not going to have that ramp up anymore as affliction, so you're not be not going to be able to spam five unstable afflictions on one target and obviously burst them down like that. You're now going to have a new spell which I'm going to talk about in a second. So I think it's a little bit better. I think unstable affliction can obviously still be dispelled, but it's just better in my opinion because at least they're not dispelling five stacks of your burst, they're only dispelling one. And you don't have to use soul shards to obviously ramp up your unstable afflictions. So you know when you go into arena and you put five unstable afflictions on your target, gonna get your burst out and then they dispel it. That's like the worst feeling as an affliction warlock. It's not gonna be like that anymore because unstable affliction doesn't consume a soul shard and you and it no longer stacks. So it just more it's more consistent damage um, overall, and I think it's a little bit better. Um, Malphic Rupture deals damage to all enemies afflicted by their periodic spells, increased for each periodic spell on the target. So basically, this is what has replaced the five stack on stable afflictions. So there's a new ability called Malphic Rupture. What it basically allows you to do is if you have more dots on the target, the more damage it's going to do. So say if I have my um, Haunt, Corruption, Siphon Life, uh, Phantom Singularity, my Agony, and yeah, say I have five dots on a target, right? And then I have unstable affliction and everything. If I Malfric Rupture, it's going to deal a lot of damage single target wise. Oh, well, it doesn't have to be single target actually, because if you have dots on every single target, it's going to erupt. Basically, I want to compare this to kind of like Demon Wrath for Demonology back in like Legion. Um, you know how, I think it was Legion, right? Where you click the spell and it does AoE around your pets which does AoE effects. It's kind of like that, but Malfric Rupture, basically, it allows your dots to explode um, on each target, dealing a certain amount of damage for how many dots you have on the target. So I think it's going to be better than the UA spam because you can spend soul shards on Malfric Rupture, which erupts your dots. So it's kind of like um, bursting the target down. So I think that's going to be very, very decent instead of the UA spam because obviously... They can kick you when you cast Malfric Rupture, but if you manage to land it off with um, like five dots on a target, you're going to be rotten down their HP very fast. And obviously this works on AoE targets, so I think that's going to be very, very solid for Affliction. Now, so of the Seed's talent now embeds two additional um, Seeds of Corruption. So basically, it's, an, it's a talent. Uh, you gain two uh, additional Seeds of Corruption to the enemy. I don't really bother want to talk about that because it's good for AoE, Mythic Plus maybe, but... PvP wise, not that great. Demonology, Dark Pack Talent. Now scales with spell power instead, converting a demon's health into a shield for the warlock. So obviously, that's very good. So it now scales with your spell power. So more spell power, the better. Um, obviously, it's kind of just like the usual, you know, Dark Pact, but instead of um, going with the. No, I can't remember what the old one was. Dark Pact. Now scales with spell power instead, converting a demon's health into a shield for the warlock. What do we have at the moment then? Hold up. Sacrifice 20%. Yeah, so instead of sacrificing 20% of my health, it um, works based on your spell power which you have. So, again, could work. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think it might work better. So obviously the more spell power you have, the bigger shield you get, I guess, in that sense. Sorry, I kind of haven't read up the changes before, so I'm kind of thinking in my head how this works. So, the more spell power you have, the greater the shield is going to be, right? I, I think so, instead of working on 20% of your health. So, that could actually be good if you have really good gear. So, I mean, end game is going to work quite nicely, and you might not need um, the baseline soul leech instead. While the, um, you know, what's it called? You might not need your demon skin as much as what you would have thought so going on to dark fury talent um now also increases the area effect of shadow fury in addition to reducing the cooldown again this could be good but you have to cast shadow fury so in pvp it's it's okay but i think it's more of a pve situation don't know how i feel about that for pvp fire brimstone talent now generates two soul shard fragments for each additional enemy struck so this is, again, really good for PvE because you can get loads of your Soul Shard fragments, therefore allowing you to do more Chaos Bolts onto the target. However, in a PvP scenario, sure, if you're against like DKs with loads of pets, this could work because you can get your Embers up quick and then obviously with Lucid Dreams and everything could be good. I'm not sure how they're working Essences in the next um, expansion, if they're like getting rid of them or not. I don't know if they are, so I need to kind of see that, but 
for now, say they are gone, and I think this is going to be a nice talent for PvE, but PvP-wise, eh, could be better, could be worse. It's, it's basically like, you can play it, you cannot play it, it's, it's not going to be like impactful for Destro Lock, right? So, that's the only changes we have, but if I bring up my ideas now, so I've made a lot of ideas that I think could work. So I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Um, can I zoom in to this? Yeah, I can. So basically, the changes are as follows. This is what I would like to see in Shadowlands, basically. Okay, guys? So, Affliction. At the moment, we this is going to be a long video, by the way, just an FYI, because I did promise I'd do this. Um, so basically, right now, we've only got two changes for Affliction, and that's, well, no, three. So Unstable Affliction no longer stacks. Great. Malfric Rupture, awesome. Serve the seeds, doesn't matter. All right, so basically, I have made a whole list that I think they may, sh well, they should consider for alpha in general. Bring it in, make sure people test it out to see if it's balanced, and for just Shadowlands overall, okay? So basically, Affliction. In Mr. Pandaria, there was nothing more I loved than Soul Swap, right? So basically, if you don't know what Soul Swap was, guys, it was a talent that allows you to, say if you have five dots on one target, you it consumes like a Soul Shard, you can grab all those dots, which remain on that target, and then you can swap it to a different target. So instead of you having to uh, manually cast an Unstable Affliction and Agony and a Corruption on a new target, you can literally take the dots from one target, and say if you have 10 stacks of Agony, that comes as well, so it doesn't come as one stack, and then you can pull it on another target. So it's basically your immediate dots can go onto a different target. So this made it really good for 3v3 Arena because you could literally just get full dots on three targets within a matter of like 10 seconds, and it was so good, especially for Burst, man. Like, you could one-shot people back then. It was so much fun, and just rotting down the enemy, especially if you played like Shadow Cleave with a, um, I think it's called Shadow Cleave, right, with an Unholy DK. That was so good. I got to like 2k, and I barely had any keybinds. It was so great, man. I loved playing that composition. It was just the best feeling being able to rush in, put my dots on one target, soul swap, pull it onto another target, soul swap that again, pull it onto another target, and that's that whole enemy team rotting down behind pillars. It was so good, man. And then there's Kill Jaden's Cunning. Um, I mean, I don't really want this for Affliction as such. I, uh, did I put it down here? No, I didn't. I'll talk about it now then. So basically, Kill Jaden's Cunning, as I'm aware, this was the ability that allowed you to cast while moving for a short period of time. Um, yeah, as I'm aware, right? So, this was obviously great back in the day. I mean, there was some better talents to use than this, but I know that if you're a Destro Lock, you could use this to get your Chaos Bolts off while walking for, like, three seconds. It kind of worked like the spell for um, Shamans. I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called now, where they can basically cast a couple spells while moving for like six seconds or something but for warlocks it was only for like three seconds so could be a little bit better could be worse but i mean this is not groundbreaking it's something that might make the game a little bit more fun but it's nothing that i want in the game right now but it could benefit us in shadowlands depending on the situation but i just think that it's a cool talent and back in mr pandaria it was six so you never know it could be a good talent to obviously choose and then, obviously, Malfric Grasp. So, it's hard to explain this one. So, basically, you have dots on the target. And instead of using your Drain Life or Drain Soul, that's a filler ability all the time, you can use Malfric Grasp, which basically allows you to rot down the enemy's HP. Um, so, if you have loads of dots on the target, it allows you to, like, just basically consume those dots and, like, rot down the enemy. It's, it's hard to explain, but... See, I try and as my like you know best as possible to explain how this spell works, but I love this spell. Um, it's just better than doing the drain life spam all the time, especially if you have inevitable demise, because then you got to do shadow bolt all the time, and it just feels like you're PVEing all the time. So I kind of want to see Malfric grasp in the sense that if we're getting Malfric rupture, which you have to spam, right? Malfric grasp would be a nice filler ability. Instead of trying to get your soul shards for Malfric Rupture. Because if you're trying to rot down the enemy anyway. Malfric Scraps 
but it's just going to be be able to like get your damage out a little bit quicker. So I feel like it's a great substitute for Shadow Bolt instead. Because you can just cast Malfric Grasp, which rots down the enemy depending on how many dots you have on them. So I kind of feel like it's better than Drain Life as well. With Because some people go Inevitable Demise like myself where you get 50 stacks. So you can't even use Drain Life until you hit the 50 stacks. So I'm literally constantly forced to use Shadow Bolt. And I feel like if we have another filler, it might work a little bit better. Um, but yeah, moving on to demo. Hopefully you guys understand what I meant by that. Um, obviously, if you have questions, post down in the comments down below and I'll see if I can do anything. So Demonology. So I'm going off Mr. Pandaria and previous expansions for these spells because back then it was so much fun to play this game. And it is still fun, but there's some spells I would love to see return. So for example, Wild Imps. Now, Demonology obviously had to get a big rework that's why i don't play it anymore because obviously in legion i think it was um with the introduction to uh obviously demon hunters demonology got reworked because demon hunters were essentially demonology warlocks right because they have metamorphosis and they were demons and they can basically charge towards the enemy leap you know fly and that's essentially what demonology warlocks were in mr pandaria so i want I kind of want to see Demonology re rework. I know they've already done it, but at the moment, Demo just feels like the clunkiest spec ever to play in the game. Like, there's just so much going on, right? You've got to spam cast your Shadow Bolts and then get your Hand of Goldan out. Redo that about three times until you get full stacks. Make sure your Dreadstalkers are out and obviously um, make sure you CC the target and then you get your Tyrant out. Your Tyrant hits for a ton and then you rinse and repeat. It just seems like there's so much ramp up for little reward and if you don't play big tyrant build especially you're not going to be doing that much damage so i kind of feel like if you have a rework on demonology it's going to work a little bit better so obviously wild imps is a spell that i loved so basically you click this ability i think it was on like a two minute cooldown or something and then it summons wild imps around you which damages a target as simple as that man instead of having to ramp up your shadow bolts waiting for the procs and then hand of gold down to get your imps out this was such a good like um, spell to use when you burst because you could instantly get your wild imps out and just destroy the enemy. Same with Metamorphosis. I love Metamorphosis for burst. It was l literally my favorite Warlock spell because when you go in Metamorphosis, it changes your current spells. So you got like Lash. Um, if you fall from the sky, right, you can literally do a leap, which leaps you towards the ground so you don't take full damage. I mean... There was Chaos Wave, which basically chunks the enemy HP, which replaces your Hand of Goldan. I mean, Metamorphosis is the best ability, like, Warlocks have ever seen, right? This was the best. If you see a Demonology Warlock pop Wild Imps in Metamorphosis, you knew to run. Because he can just run towards you, spam Lash, get you his Doom on, fear you, Chaos Wave, Chaos Wave, you're dead. Like, that's all she wrote, man. Metamorphosis was the best spell, but it's just a shame that it got um, taken out in Legion because of Demon Hunters. So, I was thinking maybe we could do something with our Dreadstalkers, you know, because Dreadstalkers have a cast time. It's like a 2.5 to 3 second cast time. So, I thought, the Dreadstalkers are not too important in the game, but they're obviously great um, to keep people in combat, you know, stop drinks and everything like that in Arena. So, I thought, how about, um, not baseline, I meant to, I meant to say... Um, instead of there being a cast time, instant dreadstalkers. That's what I meant to say. So instant dreadstalkers. So we, you know that PvP talent where your dreadstalkers cast time is now instant. How about demonology warlocks in um, Shadowlands get that baseline? I, f I feel like that would be a good substitute for demonology warlocks because it wouldn't feel like there's too much ramp up then because you have dreadstalkers out immediately instead of having to cast it. So you, there's not that much spells you're going to need to cast as a Demonology Warlock if you have instant Dreadstalkers. And obviously that frees up a PvP talent for you, so you can play something else. Now, I feel like that would be a good substitute for what Demonology has now, because obviously, like I said, it frees up a space, and it allows you to get your Dreadstalkers out instantly, and it allows you to focus a lot more on your burst by ramping up your um, Shadow Bolts into your Hand of Goldan. So I feel like instead, because obviously your Dreadstalkers is on rotation, so it allows you just to get those out a little bit quicker, and therefore allowing your burst to get out quicker, and you can mount the target. So I feel like that would be good. I spoke about this earlier, but Demon Wrath, this is just another fun ability. It allows you to AoE the target, so basically... 
um, around your pets there's like a shadowy eruption um, doing AoE damage to all targets. I just thought that would be nice for maybe PvE, could be good in PvP but it's not the end of the world if you don't see that. I mean it was just a little bit fun um, I thought of because it just allows you to mount the targets instead of doing single target damage all the time as a demonology warlock. This could just be used as a filler to AoE people down when they're running. Um, Demonic Empowerment basically empowers your demons to do more damage. We saw this in Legion. I think that might be a good substitute um, because you have loads of pets out at the moment. So if you can empower your demons during burst phase, I feel like that would be so great for um, AoE and for single target. Because if you can do your burst right as a demo lock and get your tyrant out and then empower your tyrant even more. Oh my god, he's going to hit for a ton. I mean, Tyrant's so easy to, like, negate now, right? Um, because I think he can be banished. Um, so if you're against another Warlock, he can be banished. He can also be lined. Um, I don't know if he can be stunned, but I know he can be line of sighted, so he can't even cast. So I feel like just having something to empower your demons to do a little bit more so you don't have to rely on your Tyrant could be a little bit better, right? Hellfire, I thought of this maybe in a PvE scenario, maybe PvP to get rogues out of stealth. Because the way I get rogues out of stealth as a demo lock is by using my foul guard's blade storm. So I feel like having the hellfire will allow you to AoE around yourself and therefore allowing you to get like rogues out of stealth. I mean if you play by with a demon hunter you don't need this but I just thought it might be something to spice up the arena action gameplay and get rogues out of stealth. Maybe keep people in combat and... I don't know, just AoE low pets down. So say if like DK pets come out and they're all low HP like Magnus and you know stuff like that, you can Hellfire and get rid of them. Destro, so remove a focus care spell. Now this is one that I kind of stand strongly against in a sense that cares, focus care spell's great, but I loved the meta where you did Havoc double care spell, right? I feel like this focus care spell talent you have to play no matter what that is always your first pick for pvp talent because it empowers your um focus like your care spot by like 65 percent but it no longer strikes an additional target um with your havoc op now i think that Havoc Chaos Bolt was when I actually liked Destro Locks because you had so much CC, right? And you can actually do a lot of damage during your burst phase because instead of focusing one target and mounting them, you could split the pressure if you had your Immolate up and then your Incinerates and then back then you could fire in Brimstone and then double Chaos Bolt and that's all she wrote. So I feel like having um, Focus Chaos Bolt's good, but I don't think it's the best scenario. I mean... Focus Care Spell is kind of good in the sense that you already have a lot of abilities to use while in Havoc, like Double Coil and Double Incinerate and Conflagrate for your Bursting Flare, um, if you play that. But I feel like if we remove this and maybe substitute it for something a little bit better, then that way, instead of relying on those big, massive Care Spells, you could use Filler abilities instead. I don't know, let me know what you feel about this. I mean, focus care spots are not a problem at the moment. It's just that the care spot hits for a ton, and you're kind of forced to run behind a pillar when facing, like, Destro locks and stuff. So I would love to see something that gets rid of this, because when I fight a Destro lock, man, because I play Affliction, right, I don't want to sit and run behind a pillar 24-7 when they pop their Infernal, right? That's not how you should be playing Arena. You should be going in. If they pop their burst, sure, you can run, but you shouldn't have to run every single time you see their Infernal come out and their Chaos Bolt. It, it shouldn't happen. You should be able to sit in the fight, reflect, control the situation, and kill. You shouldn't have to run. Guys, guys, uh, we, we're going to run from this uh, Chaos Bolt because it's going to hit me for like 300k. You shouldn't have to do that. So I feel like removing Focus Chaos Bolt or just maybe nerfing it or something could be a little bit better. Um. I also said make Soul Le a Leech less OP, so every single arena game, obviously as you know by now, this is a PvP class change, so Soul Leech is ridiculous for Destro, so obviously as you're Destro you get a bigger shield because that's just the way it works, you know, more damage, uh, you, the more HP, I, I can't remember how it works necessarily, but there is a, you know, like a passive trait which makes your shield very OP and you get a lot of healing from your Soul Leech. Um, I kind of feel like Destro needs to be nerfed in the Soul Leech area because they just absorb too much health, man. Every single game you do, especially in twos or threes against a Destro lock, they will be second or third on healing. 
all the time because you could have like a 10 minute game in threes right and the destro will nearly do as much passive healing than the healer who is literally trying to keep you 100 percent um hp all the time right as a destro you can just sit afk basically and absorb and tank so much damage destro's too tanky at the moment i think they need to be nerfed a little bit in regards to soul leech i know i'm going to get haters for saying that but i can say it i play a warlock and i don't like the fact that destro's the strongest spec out of the three and the tankiest so i would love to see some changes in regards to this and maybe just make it a little bit more fair also i had life tap um life tap's awesome but what i actually meant by life tap i didn't mean life tap i mean i meant the ability i can't remember the name i think it was called health tap or something um which basically allowed you to gain more health so in Mr. pandaria there was an ability where you can consume soul shards to give you healing that's literally it so it basically life tap allows you to heal yourself so it, I, I just thought it'd be like a little nice spell um i was just thinking i've seen some class changes on priest priest is um like holy priest in general they have an ability which allows you to like um steal an enemy specs uh spell so basically if they use it on a warlock it's like a two minute cooldown or 1.5 they can steal your spell for like 10 seconds and they actually get fear so they can steal your fear. If they do that to mages, they can steal mages polymorph. They do it to shamans. It's like they're frost shock. So they can steal your ability for like 10 seconds. And you you can't cast it for that period of time. Until obviously it's gone. So what I was thinking is. There was a spell in Mr. Pandaria. I think it was warlocks which had it. Or was it druids? I can't remember. But you pull it on a... I think you pull it on a druid and then you could um, have the druid's rejuvenation for the whole 3v3 game as long as the buff persists. So I, I think that could be quite decent because with the way they're working classes at the moment, they're bringing back new spell, no, old spells and introducing new ones which seem good. Like Holy Priest seems like the most f not balanced class at the moment in alpha because they have so much utility. They have It's like a priest's dream to have that class. It's like... Dis discipline priest mixed into holy because they have a lot of damage and they have a lot of utility and survivability to work with so i don't know i would like to see something like that if you go to like druids put a spell on them and you could have their rejuvenation for a game or something i don't know some some spells like that with uniqueness could be good um so neutral ones now and then i will obviously end the video so basically neutral talent so as you know i don't know if you do know but corruption is a baseline talent no a baseline spell now for all three specs so if you're demonology destro and affliction you get corruption so basically um if you don't know what corruption is it basically corrupts the enemy dealing a certain amount of shadow damage over a period of time literally all i can say about it it does shadow damage to a target over like a 15 second duration or 20 second right so however um this actually has a cast time now in um in the alpha as i've seen so i would like the cast time to be removed because at the moment why like why would destro and demo have corruption it doesn't make any sense because affliction's always been the spec that rots the enemy down so what like there's no scenario where you would stop your rotation and use corruption as a destro lock, right? You can either pick to use, like, put corruption on a target, which is like a two second cast time in alpha, or you can, like, spam four incinerates and get a juicy care spell. Which one would you guys rather pick? I think I would pick the care spell over corruption. So they need to make this instant cast time or just get rid of it for the other specs because I don't see it being good for demo or destro. Considering there's so much ramp up with the specs, why would you want to get rid of your rotation to use corruption, right? I just feel like it doesn't fit with Destro or Demo, so I'd take it out and get rid of the cast time in general. Um, Shadow Fury, I hate the cast time. So at the moment, it's on like a what a 1.2 second cast time or something. It's not bad, but I would have loved to seen um, Shadow Fury get um, instant cast again you know just run, like back in the mr pandaria days i know i keep going back to that but just running in instant shadow fury into a full fear into a pet charm like oh my god you could you could just set up the most insane burst with shadow fury man just you could run while casting it well it wasn't the cast time but you know you could run and and um, activate the spell it's just so good so obviously this is like something that i dream of um coming back but i don't think it will necessarily come back unfortunately but i still think that it would be a great spam nonetheless foul flame basically 
it used to be in a well, I can't even speak used to be a um filler ability allowing you to basically strike the target for shadow damage i just thought it'd be good it kind of i think it kind of worked like soul strike for demo locks but it, there was no cooldown time you could just spam it which was great just allows you to have more finishing potential as a warlock in general i just thought it would be nice um, to do more damage instantly um shadow burn you know what shadow burn is basically it's like execute but for warlocks um, I just thought that it'd be quite nice um, to have baseline. So basically neutral means for all three specs, right? So I would have loved to see Shadow Burn again because Affliction has no kill potential. Literally, if I want to kill somebody, I use Death Bolt or I use Lethal Strikes, uh, um, the Essence. So I kind of want to stray away from that. And if Shadow Burn was in the game again, it could be very nice for a kill potential, but I don't know how you guys feel about that. I kind of like the idea of having Shadow Burn back for all three specs, because if the target's low, I find that, especially as Affliction, they can just top themselves off again. But I guess um, we have Malfric Rupture now, so maybe we could do a little bit more damage. So I obviously haven't tested it out, but I this is going from what I've seen. Shadow Burn would be quite decent. Blood Fear. So if you don't know what Blood Fear is, you basically pull this spell on yourself and if a melee strikes you while you have blood fear up they get instantly feared that sounds cool right i feel like the big problem at the moment is wizard cleaves and just cleave melee cleaves in general so obviously if you don't know what i mean by that in arena um i haven't played arena in quite a while but this is just going off on what i watch and what i know most wizard compositions so wizard meaning casters are Destro Warlocks and then another person. So it's mainly Destro Ellie or Destro um, Fire Mage. So to counter compositions, um, sorry, I'm straying away from the topic. So to counter compositions like Demon Hunter Monk or counter compositions like Demon Hunter Warrior or DK Demon Hunter, I kind of feel like Blood Fear would be good because if they're sticking on you all the time, Blood Fear can just be that extra ability you press that manages to fear the enemy so you can control the situation instead of them bursting you from 100 to 0 in a matter of seconds. Because obviously at the moment, burst is a big, big issue. I mean, there's literally nobody plays Affliction Warlocks anymore. Shadow Priests are quite bad in PvP. They're good for spam purging, but their damage could be better. We have like no burst damage. Whereas there's, comp, there's comps which just can get you from 100 to 0 in a matter of seconds. Like I was saying, Fire Mage, Greater Pyroblast and Destro Warlocks. You die if you don't run away from them. Uh, same with like Monks and Demon Hunters. So it's just a little bit better. Um, same with like DK, Demon Hunter 2. It's just better if you can run from the situation and control it rather than just dying in one stun you know so blood fear just allows you to cc the enemy uh, i talked about life tap already in destro allowing you to basically heal so i feel i figured that would be a little bit better my headset turned itself off for some reason and um, bigger docked pack so i thought at the moment we everybody specs into demon skin right you don't see many people using dark packed anymore so it's kind of always better to use demon skin if you don't know what Dark Pact is, basically, I haven't done this in so long, right? So if you look at my HP, I'll show you. So at the moment, I have Demon Armor up, which increases my HP. I have 577k HP. What we used to do back in the day was use Grim of Sacrifice. You sacrifice your pet, and you still have 577 HP. But watch this. If you Shadow World Bulwark, increases your HP by 30%. So I'm now at 751, and then Shield... I get a three, uh, 39,000, no, 394k shield, sorry. Uh, so obviously that is ridiculous if you do that. But baseline, you don't get a 394 shield. You get a, what, a 20% shield, I think, of your HP. So it's not the best talent. Obviously the passive regen from Demon Skin is just so much better because obviously it's not on a minute cooldown. And you always get a passive shield and it heals you, as I'm aware, right? Um, it's your soul leech absorbs from a passive recharges at a rate of 0.5, maximum health every one second, and may absorb up to 15% maximum health. So it's basically a 15% shield that always recharges, so it doesn't heal you. Sorry, I, I kind of 
I kind of dodge because it's a shield, right? Um, but yeah, Dark Pact is just not great. I'm kind of losing my voice now, but I everybody picks Demon Skin. I just want to show you what the um, standard Dark Pact is. Um, let me not play Haunt. So the standard Dark Pact is, if I summon my pet, 303k. So it's a 300, like 30,000, yeah, 303,204. So, wait, yeah, no, I am, I am correct, right? I, I'm not being an idiot right now. That's 303,204. Yeah, pretty sure, unless I completely suck at math, which could be the case. But I just feel like having the Dark Pact's not good anymore. So if we can get a substitute, maybe reduce the cooldown, increase the absorb rate, could be a little bit better. Um, Howl of Terror, if you don't know what this is, it's basically a mass AoE fear. So if there's, like, again, um, going back to the Blood Fear for the example of Melee Cleaves, if you have Howl of Fear and people run towards you, uh, Howl of Terror, sorry, then you can pop this ability and it just mass fears everybody around you for a certain period of time. I would love this ability back, especially if I'm getting, you know, completely owned by DKs, I can just mass fear their pets and just love life, you know, teleport out of there, use my gateway, that's all she wrote, that'd be so nice man, Howl of Terror was an ability I love to use just to control the scenario, if I'm getting bursted down, I'm like, hold up, you know, all I, what I can do here is Howl of Terror, they trinket that, I can either fear on DR, I can use my succubus and pet charm them, I can shadow fury, um, if I'm demo, I can like axe toss them. There's just so much crowd control you could have, and it could just be unreal, man. However, if they do bring back Blood Fear or they bring back Howl of Terror, this has to be a talent, in my opinion. And this, mm hmm, thinking how it would work, because although it's not realistic having these back because we have so much utility, I kind of feel like it has to replace something. So, for example, you could have level 40 talents or 60 talents, for example, and one be Shadow Fury, one be Howl of Terror, and one be Blood Fear. So you have to pick between them all. So I wouldn't give them back baseline, but I would incorporate it into like a talent system, which replaces one of the original um, stuns that you have, allowing it to be a little bit better. That's what I think. So maybe, you know how we have the talent what's it called sorry dark fury so here reduced cooldown on shadow fury so maybe you could have 75 talent dark fury howl of tower terror and blood fury so basically one's a reduction in your stun and then the other is two fears so you have to choose wisely depending on which one you want to go and maybe dark fury instead of obviously your shadow fury being on a 1.2 second cast it's instant so you can either have an instant stun or the choice of a mass fear or a fear that when people hit you, they get feared. So I think that could be actually a really nice incorporation of that. But I just don't know how they would make it work and be balanced. Uh, Dark Bargain. So this was another shield. Kind of worked like Dark Pact. However, it like allowed you to not take any damage for like 5 seconds or whatever it was. So this was an, basically a 3 minute um, ability that allowed you... It was like a save you're about to die. You pop your Dark Bargain. And then you can't die for like five seconds. That's basically what it was, right? I think that's actually really good. It's kind of like the unstoppable thing for like demon hunters or the shield for um, rogues when they're about to die, like cheat, cheat death or whatever it's called. I think it's decent. However, a three minute um, duration. No, uh, not duration. What am I on about? Three minute um, cooldown. I don't think it's going to be best case scenario in Shadowlands because everybody has their old spells back but I would love to see this something that allows you to stop dying but again this is only if they deal with the current situation with um, soul leech and warlocks in general healing too much so I kind of don't think they should incorporate this again but it would be nice to see a big shield because I although I love soul leech right I kind of want to play my shields again sacrificing your pet and having the biggest shield possible is so good i just wish they could do that um dark regeneration now this is a spell that i absolutely love it is the best healing spell warlocks have ever had in the game fight me if you think otherwise dark regeneration basically what it does is you cast it you get like a big purple ring around your character and it heals you for 
I can't remember how much it heals you. I think it's for like 30% of your health or maybe more. I honestly can't remember. It's been a long time since Mr. Pandaria. So if I haven't got the details, I'm sorry. I have tried looking up all the details to get more like an accurate representation. But unfortunately, I kind of couldn't. Um, nothing really came up. So Dark Regeneration, it basically... Two minute cooldown, I think, if I remember off the top of my head. And it heals you for like 30 or 50% of your health or something like that. So, it's, it's just a basically an extra heal. So, if you're about to die, you can pop Dark Regeneration and it just instantly starts healing you. So, I just feel like that would be really, really nice. Especially if you go against like RMD or RMP. I, I think that this could be nice. Especially if you play with a Druid, right, and they spam Purge the Hots on you. You can just use Dark Regen to regen yourself up. So... It, li it literally does what it says on the cover, right? Dark regen. So, warlocks are dark. Regeneration restores health. Dark restores health. So, ba basically, it's an ability that allows you to gain more health. But, guys, that's basically it, if I'm completely honest. I mean, there's nothing really I need to talk about. I mean, it's a 40-minute video so far. So, just... I've talked about basically everything. I mean, they could do passive changes, like maybe... Demonic gateway if you step next to it you instantly get transported. I mean, there's just tiny tiny things that they could do Maybe like nether ward baseline, but again, it's not that strong anyway because it could be spell steel Like there, there's just so much they could do that. It's hard to talk about it all in one video, you know because There's spells that I haven't like are at the back of my brain which I want to talk about and I just can't remember so let me know if there's comment like um there's spells in the comment section that I didn't mention because obviously would be nice to know your guys' thoughts as well. But guys, that was my opinion on the class changes for Warlock only. Sorry about that. It's a whole video dedicated towards Warlock. Maybe I'll do some more class changes for other classes, but we all know Warlock's my main, so I figured that I'd cover just Warlock in today's episode and give my initial thoughts and feedback on how I um well you know what i want to see in shadowlands and just how i reacted in general to these changes i think they've done a great job affliction looks promising but i just haven't seen any changes for destro or demo really so i feel like they're going to be the basic spec that they all have been in bfa where you just ramp up and do big damage with one ability which is not really what i want to see i mean Destro and Demo's always been like that, but at least Demo had a little bit of variety where you could rot people down with your, um, well I say rot people, you could AoE cleave people down with your imps and just your demons in general. I just feel powerful when I can summon demons, and at the moment it just feels like there's so much ramp up with Demo, it just makes me not want to play it because I just get locked out all the time in PvP. And if I'm Destro, it's just too easy man, and the ramp up's so quick, and then your Chaos Bolts hit like 200k, and then you one-shot people, and that's obviously fun to do, but it's not fun to get, like, 200k Chaos Bolt to the face. Um, so that's why I play Affliction. Love Affliction, always have, and the dot meta is so good. Well, guys, if you made it toward, like, to the end of this video, I just want to shout you guys out. You guys are the real OGs. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did agree with me, obviously, comment on this video and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, guys, that was my initial thoughts on the class changes. It was one take. And all I need is one take, baby. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you did like it, then obviously leave a like, comment down below, and also subscribe to the channel. I've been x this. Catch you in the next one. So, peace!